Good morning, and welcome to Wichita State's weekly briefing. I'm Zach Gearhart, Director of Government Relations for Wichita State. We hold these weekly briefings in an effort to keep the campus and the public at large better informed about activities occurring at Wichita State University. Following a university update and today's future topic, there will be time for questions. As we mentioned in our August 15th briefing, WSU continues making great strides through its strong commitment to applied learning and research. This is evidenced by its new record for R&D awards, which totaled 136 million in fiscal year 19 and up, up from 104 million in fiscal year 18. This significant increase comes from a steep rise in contracts and awards from the U.S. Department of Defense. In fact, over the past 18 months, we're proud to announce that the National Institute for Aviation Research and the university have hosted two dozen visits from all branches of the military, showcasing the R&D capabilities of our, our campus offers. A total of 136 military guests have seen WSU firsthand, including three department secretaries and multiple generals. And today, these numbers increase even more as U.S. Senator Jerry Moran, WSU, and NIAR host Acting Secretary of the United States Army, Ryan McCarthy, for a tour of the John Bardo Center at 1.45 p.m. with media availability at 2.05 p.m. We welcome the Acting Secretary and Senator Moran to campus. This visit is just another indicator that our commitment to applied learning and research is reaping big benefits for our students, faculty, and industry partners in the region as a whole. In other military-related news, WSU is set to host several public and private events as part of the Wichita Navy Week, September 9th through 15th. Navy Weeks are the Navy's signature outreach program, allowing this service branch to build and strengthen ties to communities who do not have frequent visibility of the Navy. At 6 p.m. on Tuesday, September 10th in the Beggs Ballroom, everyone is invited for a special lecture from Rear Admiral Nancy LaCour titled, My Path to Service and Leadership in Modern America. LaCour is the United States Navy Director of Maritime Partnership Program for U.S. Naval Forces, Europe and Africa, and Vice Commander of the Navy's Sixth Fleet based in Naples, Italy. Her lecture will highlight her career journey from young naval aviator to Navy Rear Admiral. She'll also talk about the importance of service both in and out of uniform, how to be an effective leader in today's society, and the opportunity that exists for women in the military. We look forward to having her on campus. And at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, September 11th in the CAC Theater, military and veteran services will host a September 11th remembrance ceremony. The ceremony will feature a talk from Commander Chevis Lewis, commanding officer of the USS Wichita. Everyone is invited to attend. As supporters of military, as supporters of military students from all branches and backgrounds, we hope you'll join us in welcoming the Navy to shock a nation. For a full list of WSU's Navy Week events, visit wichita.edu slash Navy Week. As you may have heard, working groups of diverse stakeholders have been meeting the last few months to review and refresh the university's goals. The valuable input and insight they've contributed underscores our commitment to shared governance, which is key to fulfilling the mission and vision of the university. In addition, Kay Monk Morgan, Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs, is also meeting with various constituency groups to get feedback. As this refresh of our strategic plan wraps up, we want to invite everyone to hear about the progress that was made and bring their questions to a town hall at 3 p.m. Thursday, September 19th in Hubbard Hall. With the semester now in full swing, we want to remind students, faculty, and staff not to miss out on one of the fall signature events. <clears throat> academic Convocation, which will take place at 9.30 a.m. Thursday, September 12th in Wilner Auditorium. Academic Convocation is an exciting event that blends the WSU Reads program with other learning and engagement opportunities along with faculty awards, a student speaker, keynote address, and book signing. This year's keynote speaker is Bill Burnett, co-author of Designing Your Life, which was selected as this year's WSU Reads Common Read Book. WSU Reads program speaks sparks conversation between students across majors while making meaningful connections between educational concepts and out of the classroom programs and activities. It's one of the many ways the university is working to enhance the Shocker experience to better ensure students' academic and personal success. We look forward to seeing every student at academic convocation. If you can't attend, the event will be live streamed at wichita.edu slash convocation. 
In addition to academic convocation, the university kicks off each semester with a variety of fun free events and opportunities for students to connect with each other and with university resources. These events help students get engaged and acclimated to college life sooner, which is key to the university's effort to support, retain, and graduate them. A prime example is Welcome Fest, which takes place during the first two weeks of each semester and features a dozen of activities. A few events from, or a few event highlights from this year's Welcome Fest include Clash at the Colleges, <clears throat> Walk a Mile, and Bid Day. These are just a few of the more than 350 on-campus events students enjoy every year. To keep track of the fun and excitement still to come this semester and for ways to get involved beyond the classroom, visit wichita.edu slash involvement. And now I'd like to introduce our featured speaker, Dr. Kimberly Ingber, to give an Honors College update. I always have to do that with the microphone. Thank you, I'm very excited to be here. I serve as the Dean of the Dorothy and Bill Cohen Honors College, and I'm gonna start with students. If you ask a student why honors at Wichita State University, what we do, why we're here, many will say we do more meaningful work. If you ask a student what a new expanded space in Shocker Hall means to them, as I did as I was on my way here, uh, at least one of them will say, the microwave is one of the most essential things to life. I need ramen. So maybe ramen is not the first thing that you think about when you think about an honors college on campus. But this really speaks to the goal of the university to be student-centered and to create as many spaces on campus where students can be students. And honors is one of those spaces. We want to engage those students in a world of ideas. We want to engage those students in action. And we want them to know that this is a place for them to dream. So the fit of the Honors College into the mission and the priorities has always been really obvious to me. It's very hard to pick just a few things to say in about five minutes about what honors means to our students and to our faculty. So I'm going to give you some numbers. 675 students, about 70 areas of study. We award up to $500,000 in scholarships. Some of those are tuition scholarships. Many of those are scholarships that challenge students to study abroad, to do things like uh, go to Kenya and learn about social action and dance, to take internships in nonprofits. We have about a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio in our honors seminars. We have about 75 faculty who are engaged in honors each year. We have one student who graduated last year with this very ambitious honors baccalaureate degree, and she was interested in combining education and English. She studied abroad in Finland. She learned about what the Finn government was doing and what the education system was like in Finland, and she wanted to bring it back here. And what she's doing after she graduated is working in Storytime Village across the street in the Fairmount neighborhood. So, Think globally, act locally, cultivate your talents as an honor student or as a faculty member, and think about how you can have an impact on your community. The new space in Shocker Hall, we're talking about as opening doors. So we are literally opening doors, as you can maybe see behind me here, in a new expanded space in Shocker Hall that includes uh, dedicated study areas for students, a seminar room, it does have a microwave. Uh, it gives them places where they can just hang out. It gives them places where they can do complex math on the whiteboards. Uh, we have a whole wall of whiteboards there for them. Uh, and there was a calculus uh, problem that was worked out on that whiteboard. Uh, again, as I was leaving that space today with a little note that said, will you be my study partner, right? So places create communities, and that too is the goal of this university and where honors uh, is fitting into what our ambitions are uh, in terms of uh, engaging our own talents and moving communities forward. Uh, this um, new space, when we talk about opening doors, 
is also metaphorical. So one of the challenges uh, that we have issued to our students and to our faculty is to always think about opening doors for others. And we inherit that goal from Emory K. Lindquist, who was the namesake of the honors program, uh, who talks about man thinking, who talks about man cultivating his own talents and improving the lives of others. So we're carrying forward that tradition for our honors students. I wanna tell you just a few of the things that we're doing um, to build a foundation for our students and some of the other exciting things that come along with this opening of this new space. We received a National Science Foundation grant in cooperation with the College of Engineering. This is a sub-award with Kansas State to strengthen the transition to college for underserved minorities in STEM majors. So we have an alliance with community colleges and colleges across campus, uh, across Kansas, uh, to strengthen these transitions. We've been working uh, on developing first-year seminars and a first-year research experience program. All honors students are required to engage in research. All students can come to the honors college for resources that can support them in undergraduate research and creative activities. So in 2017, it was actually the students who said, we need a front door to the honors college. And what they meant was, we need all students and faculty to realize that we are present on this campus and that we are here as a resource. And we want to invite more students and more faculty into this space. The undergraduate research grants, just one example of the ways that any student can engage with honors. Any student can earn honors credit for a service learning course. We welcome students into interdisciplinary tracks in leadership and law and public policy that were actually designed by faculty for transfer students because we know that transfer students are very successful here. So this honors college is really rooted in the mission and the strengths of this university. Finally, I invite everyone to attend a dedication and ribbon cutting on September 12th. So next Thursday at noon, all students and faculty, staff, and community and friends are invited to see this new, to, new student space in the Honors College and to talk to students about what that space has meant to them. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dean Ingber. Any questions uh, about her update or any updates going on at campus? Perfect, seeing none at this, uh, we always close these by reminding you about the mission and vision of Wichita State University, which is to be internationally recognized as the model for applied learning and research, and the mission to be an essential educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. Thank you for attending. Uh, we'll see you at the next weekly briefing, 10 a.m. Thursday, September 12th.